assalamu alaikum students uh, so in this uh, in this particular lecture i wish to start with uh, a more visual presence and there's a reason for it uh, this lecture although it's uh, uh, it will be a smaller lecture but it's uh, it taps on a very important concept um, and whenever there is uh, an integration of various uh, uh, different components of physiology it's a personal favorite of mine uh, it's quite exciting uh, and it's more real life uh, more closer to uh, the ultimate objective of physiology which is basically clinical medicine uh, so it's it's these integrative uh, uh, concepts where where multiple things come together uh, is is where uh, you'll probably be seeing me uh, explaining stuff more in a in a in a visual manner so uh, our topic today is basically from uh, from kidney and it's where uh, you know we have been discussing uh, the the regulation of ecf volume and ecf osmolarity separately all the books discuss that separately okay uh, however a few books uh, do mention uh, that the overlapping connections the overlapping aspects of these two big concepts uh, and it's that overlap between ecf volume regulation and ecf osmolarity regulation which is uh, my uh, topic today in this short presentation i'll be only specifically targeting that you know imagine two big circles one circle is of ecf volume regulation and the other circle is ecf osmolarity regulation right so there are different scenarios which affect osmolarity different scenarios which affect volume however there are scenarios so these two um, circles the overlap in the middle uh, it is those bits those scenarios uh, uh, i i i'll pick two from from that overlapping uh, area and I, we'll discuss that inshallah so for this i'll be switching to the to the powerpoint which is a very brief powerpoint presentation as you can see we only have three three four slides really and this is basically the the, the headline and interplay of ecf volume and osmolarity uh, regulation now uh, you know you know all of this okay this is a very very nice uh, overview uh, from one of my favorite books for on physiology uh, it discusses uh, in a very very concise way uh, the sensors and how the the, state, the stuff is actually uh, maneuvered. Uh, what is maneuvered? How is it? Uh, how is it achieved? Uh, the ECF volume regulation and EC, ECF osmolarity regulation. Uh, osmol I keep on saying osmolarity. Don't be confused by that. It says osmolarity is the same thing. It's just the units uh, that some books uh, express it in. They express it in uh, kg water, and some express it in uh, osmols. So that's not really a biggie. Um, so if you if you notice, uh, this is uh, uh, in my uh, in my lecture series. I discuss this bit uh, in detail under ECF volume regulation, and again in the same renal uh, in the same renal uh, series, I discuss regulation of osmolarity and along these lines actually. So this is a very nice recap of the sensors of the volume and the osmolarity. Uh, then different pathways, i.e. the mechanisms, uh, the sensors and the responses, uh, the responders uh, of uh, ECF volume and uh, osmolarity changes, uh, what happens in the short term and what uh, uh, happens in the long term, both sides is given and eventually in the short term, which parameter is affected uh, and which uh, parameter is affected in the long term is given very it's recapped uh, so this is a summary of my lecture on regulation of ecf volume and this is a summary of the ecf osmolarity uh, lecture however since uh, because i mentioned it earlier this is not the these two separate things we have discussed a lot okay so that's that's done now we're talking about overlaps so for this I believe I've showed this diagram. Yes, I have probably at two different places. One certainly, uh, I think in 
discussing osmolarity probably. I don't remember now. Uh, so you, you may look that up. This basically chart, this uh, this chessboard or this matrix is, I find it very fascinating because it really does um, enumerate in lists all of the possible uh, volume osmolarity combinations, okay, in a very, very handy uh, matrix form. So there are, for example, let's just say the, like this, what about this, the blue, the blue normal thing. So here in, in this box, what he means is the osmolarity and the volume are the same, uh, are, are unchanged, I beg your pardon, they're unchanged, there is no change. So this is what the normal homeostasis is. When you are, when you haven't messed up any water, overly or uh, 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 gotten rid of any water or added uh, more water to your fluids uh, and or added any salt or released any uh, excreted any extra salt too much you are in homeostasis you are in equilibrium and hence osmolarity and volume both are happy so from this from this point uh, you can see these these uh, these other yellowish um, uh, boxes uh, which are so interesting uh, and, and of course uh, every box can be explained uh, by a physiologist of course and I would I would trust now that my students will be able to uh, defend each box in a viva scenario okay or maybe it's a bit wishful thinking I don't know but let's be positive in our life shall we so I'll be picking up this particular box where a person uh, drank a large amount of water. If you remember in an MCQ that I gave in your unit test, I mentioned uh, you and your silly little friend uh, joining you for a, for a night of movie watching, binge watching, remember that MCQ? And I told, I mentioned in that MCQ that one of you, I forget who, which one, one of you uh, had salted popcorns only, no drink, okay? Of course, theoretically speaking, and then you or one of you drank, uh, had those popcorns, but also had your fizzy drink or water with it. So effectively, that MCQ was to check your understanding of this matrix. Okay, those, by the way, that MCQ draws upon this box and this box. Okay, eating salt without drinking water, drinking a large amount of water. I beg your pardon, that MCQ, uh, because it had salted uh, uh, popcorn, it had hypertonic solution, i.e. you are taking salt and water equally, okay? Uh, however, today I'll be picking up on this and this. Why do I pick up on this? It's because this is only water and this is only salt, okay? And, and the, there's a reason why I mentioned this and the reason I hope will become apparent when we move along. Okay. So this is that first scenario. This is the water only scenario, all right? Just stay with me here. Uh, this is the normal blue box. If you can color code, if you like color coding, then this is that blue, this blue, this blue box here. It's depicted here, right here. And the details are normal 14 liters of total body fluids. Sodium concentration is normal at 145. Other A9s are 145. Osmolarity is sitting at 290 milliosmol per Gauge water, all of this is these are normal values. Now he gives you two separate scenarios. The one in one scenario, he adds one liter of water, and the other one, he uh, basically subtracts or takes out one liter of water. Okay, now let's see when he adds the one liter of water, what happens? What happens is the body fluids basically increase in, in volume, they become from 14 to obviously 15 liter because you've added one liter. Sodium becomes diluted from 145 to 135, A9s from 145 to 135. And look at the osmolality. Uh, it uh, drops from 290 to 270. So basically you have diluted uh, your uh, fluids. Uh, however, look at the size of the box. It has obviously, if you have not noticed it already, that this size of the box and look at this size, you have obviously increased this size. Okay. You have increased the size, you have increased the, uh, the volume while diluting the stuff, the whole the body fluids. Okay, How do you want the kidney to respond? It will excrete the water preferentially 
okay by making hypoosmotic urine we have discussed this under osmolarity regulation that when there is too much water uh, when there is too much uh, volume by by adding water to your fluids the os osmolarity if it drops below then obviously the adh is snubbed it's decreased it's inhibited the release uh, and so is thirst it's inhibited so what you pr practically what you're doing is you are basically asking the kidney to do uh, 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 water excretion uh, to the exclusion of any solute accompanying um, and you want to just get rid of that one liter of water and bring back uh, the whole thing back to the system to normal. I will just add a footnote here. The system isn't perfect. No biological system is actually. So uh, uh, while excreting hypoosmotic urine, you, you cannot imagine that it's uh, uh, pure water that you can excrete. No, uh, some solute does wash out uh, and eventually the kidney needs to adjust those solutes back to normal again. However, the main issue, the main issue is that this water is excreted and that's every, everybody becomes happy. Uh, now, uh, conversely, the mirror is when you subtract one liter of water from your normal human being, what have you done? You have done the opposite. You have uh, uh, decreased the, uh, the overall volume of fluid. You have concentrated sodium. You've concentrated A9s and you have raised the osmolarity above the 290 mark to 312. Okay. What do you want the kidney to do? Obviously, you want kidney to conserve water release hyper osmotic urine we, we call it concentration of urine we've discussed this at length okay returning the volume back to 14 liters uh, uh, and with the restoring sodium osmolarity everything back to normal okay so now uh, both of these uh, scenarios uh, you added in in one you added water in in, in the other you basically uh, subtracted water and the kidney responded by adjusting water output uh, 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 by it. Uh, I beg your pardon. It adjusted the water excretion to address the original issue and bringing back the whole thing uh, to its normal point. Uh, one thing, of course, uh, is uh, the role of kidney has to be looked at along with the thirst center. So this individual, when he uh, lost water, he became also thirsty, okay? And hence, drinking of water and conservation of water by the kidney adjusts this whole thing back to normal. This is something which is simple. It does not involve a lot of integration, which I was mentioning. So where is the integration? Where is the stuff? This is where the money is. This is where you can see that it's a lengthier uh, flow chart. It looks angry. It's not. It's fascinating, actually. So let's see. What have we done here? What we've done here is that friend of yours from the MCQ who only had salted popcorns. He had to do that, right? Make your life difficult. So you have euvolemia. Euvolemia is everything is all right. Volume is fine. Uh, you have 14 liters, etc., etc. The osmolarity is fine. Now, what you do is you only introduce salt. No water attendant. What happens is in the normal human being, if you only put in ingest salt or anything which is salty, any food which is salty, very less in water content, popcorn is the ideal, chips or whatever, you have it. What are you doing? You are not disturbing any, uh, any volume, are you? You're not taking in any volume. However, what you are doing is you are adding to your sodium. You are increasing your osmolarity. Yes? Okay. Now, Imagine a situation that this salt has gone into your ECF fluids and it has mixed in it, raising the osmolarity. Okay. Now this is an this is a this is an ECF fluid, which is different from the normal in term in terms that it is hyperosmotic. Okay. Now, what what would happen? Uh, what do you want the kidney to do? Again, drawing from your previous uh, uh, slide description. You want the kidney to uh, increase that ADH, do the concentration of urine, the whole thing, and uh, reabsorb fluid, and uh, uh, if allowed, bring water back to 15 liters. You increase water content 
such that your hypernatremia is addressed and it goes back to normal and so does the osmolarity yes so where's the twist the twist my friends is that you have addressed a osmolarity change by a volume change in the strictest sense that's not cool why because under equilibrium both volume and osmolarity need, need to be normal in this you have expanded the volume look this is not 14 this is 15 however the osmolarity by adding water has gone back to normal okay so you now need to sort out this 15 liters you now have to get rid of this extra uh, water only so that the whole thing is adjusted uh, uh, in, in a way that salt and water do not have any depravity in between do, do not have any derangement so you what you will do is excrete water and also excrete an appropriate amount of salt with it to bring back Humpty Dumpty back together again okay so this is that two step in this integration scenario I'll, I'll quickly summarize in a normal individual you added salt the added salt increased the osmolarity right what did the kidney do the kidney retained water raising the ECF volume of the fluids addressing the osmolarity however making another problem which is increasing ECF volume then the final act is excretion of water and appropriate enough excretion of salt to bring back the 14 liter normal sodium normal osmolarity fluid back to normal so next time your friend only has salted popcorns eventually his kidney needs to work more twice twice one is when it needs to retain water to immediately address the change in osmolarity issue you don't want osmolarity to be deranged for a long period of time you don't want that because all sorts of cellular volumes are dependent on it as we've discussed earlier so the first act of the kidney is to retain water to, to solve the osmolarity problem and then it has to address the volume problem later on. Uh, and this, this basically is if you were to only subtract uh, the salt out of uh, 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 the ECF volume, uh, you will have a, a totally opposite uh, situation. You will have hyponatremia. Uh, and the osmolarity will basically go down. Uh, what will the kidneys do? Obviously, the kidney will decrease the ADH uh, uh, excrete or extra water. Uh, and when finally, when the uh, ECF volume has contracted, but the osmolarity has been addressed later on, not given this slide, just like the opposite one, later on, it will uh, improve on the volume contraction by reabsorb, reabsorbing extra water and just about extra salute to bring the whole thing back to the normal stuff okay so the takeaway message is changes in os changes in osmolarity only by uh, uh, adjust by fluctuation in salt intake are treated by the kidney in two steps first is reabsorption or excretion of water whatever applies uh, to bring back osmolarity back to normal. This is the way you make the concept. So first, osmolarity is, adju is adjusted at the cost of volume. And then the second step, the volume is adjusted. Okay, this is what I wanted to discuss. Thank you very much. These are the very nice reference books that were consulted making this uh, slide with this lecture. Uh, take care. I will uh, be sharing the appropriate lectures that are, are, are uh, relevant to this particular uh, presentation, inshallah, soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.